Hi there. So we're going to continue on with uh, video 9.2 and focus on understanding the pH scale a little better and the calculations that are involved in this type of chemistry. So this is a little off topic perhaps, but it's going to give us a little insight on how this math works. If uh, we take the current data on COVID cases, this is probably not going to be as relevant next year as it is today, but you'll notice that the line starts out with a very gradual slope and rapidly increases. So that's a linear graph. If we look at this as a log logarithmic function, you'll see it looks somewhat different. Now instead of going from 500,000, a million, a million and a half, two million, everything is graduated in equal increments here. When you look at the logarithmic scale, everything is tenfold. Another word for logarithmic is exponential. So this point from here to here changes tenfold. That's ten times greater to go from here to here. Now to go from this point up to this point is another tenfold increase. So the change between these two is 9,000. The change between these two is 90,000. So do you get the idea how big they're changing? So the difference between this point here and this point here is actually a hundred times different. So it's much different than a linear graph. So how does that relate to our acids and bases? Well, we've all heard this term pH before. And a pH is simply a negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So we can think about this idea of P being something that's equivalent to the negative log of that. So what is a log anyway? Well, what we just discussed, it's sort of like what you'd raise 10 to to get that number. What the log is asking is, what would you raise 10 to to get that number? This little x right here is our log function, okay? Our base 10 log. So if I wanted to get to 100, what would I raise 10 to? to the power of. And you're thinking to yourself, I had to raise 10 to the second power because 10 times 10 is 2. So suppose I have a 1,000 as my decimal number. What is the log of that? What would I raise 10 to to get a 1,000? And the answer, of course, is 3. If I had 10,000, then, of course, I would raise 10 to the fourth power. We tend to go in the opposite direction, though. We're going to come down this way for what we're dealing with. So if the log of 100 is 2, what's the log of 10? And of course the answer is 1, 10 to the first power. What is the log of 1? And the answer is 0. So, so now, if I go to 0, I'm sorry, 0 0.1, what would be the log of that? And the answer is negative 1. If I had 0 0.01, so 0 0.01, the log of that must be negative 2. If I have 0 0.001, the log of this is negative 3. So you'll notice that every change in the logarithmic distance from 3 to negative 3 to negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, represents a tenfold increase. Does that make sense? It's 10 times greater from note to note. So when we go back here to the PowerPoint and we're looking at that, this is simply the same idea. This is the negative log of that number. So if I had a concentration of hydrogen that was equal to 0 0.01, and I took the negative log of that, so what is the log of 0 0.001, did we say? So the log of 1 is 0, negative 1. The log of this is negative 2, if we go back and look at our work. So 10 to the negative 2 power gives you 0 0.01. So what is the negative of negative 2? So the log of that is negative 2. And again, we're doing base 10 logs here, for those of you that pay attention to that kind of thing. So what is the negative log of that? The negative log would be 2. So the pH of this solution would be 2. So now, if we look at this guy, our concentration is now 0 0.00001 for the hydrogen ion. 
what would be the log of that? So one, two, three, four, five. That's log five negative, 10 to the negative five. And therefore, the negative log, so we're just taking this whole negative log thing, just means we're taking the opposite of that. So our pH would be 5. So again, as this gets less and less concentrated, what's happening to our pH? It's going up, right? Um, so what's the difference between a pH of 1 and a pH of 3? Well, that has to be 10 times 10, which is 100 times greater. What's the difference between a pH of 3 to 7? Well, that changes from 4 to 5 to 6 to 7. So 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Wow. 10,000, right? So it's a logarithmic function. Now, we don't have to worry too much about this. I want you to understand what the logarithmic function is. But to us, it's a button on the calculator. So I see I have a little button right there that says log. And right next to that is a second function. I have a 10 to the x button. 10 to the x undoes this guy. It actually, like it says, it raises 10 to whatever you're doing and returns it. If I push the log button, it goes in this direction. We are always dealing with the negative log because we're dealing in negative values and pHs are negative, never negative. As we discussed in the, just the last lecture, this KW idea says that with any solution, if I take the hydrogen times the hydroxide ion concentration, I'm always going to get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. That's just always true. So if it's an acid, the hydrogen is high, the hydroxide's low. If it's a base, the hydroxide's high and the hydrogen ion's low. If it's water, they're the same. But the product of the two will always be 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. Now this law here just says, if I take the negative log of H, I would have pH. Well, we can do the same thing with OH. There's no reason not. P just simply means we're taking the negative log of that. So what happens if I take the negative log of the hydroxide? I'd have the pOH. So negative log of H times the negative log of OH. And if you're multiplying logarithmic functions, exponents, you simply add them. So these two statements here and here are actually identical. This is done as a logarithmic function, negative log, so negative 14 became 14 down here, negative 14 exponent became 14, and so these guys come in handy. Now, we said that simply by taking the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, I can find the pH. If I take the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration, I'd have the pOH. If I add those two together, I will always get 14. Now, to undo that whole thing, what I can do is I can take 10 and raise it to the negative pH, and I'd put it back into the hydrogen ion concentration. Or I could take 10 to the negative pOH, and I'd get the hydroxide ion concentration. So, oops, um, again, right next to your log button is a 10 to the x button, so we'll be using that sometimes. Let's take a look at a couple examples here. So, let's try this problem. Let's try these problems. The pH of rainwater collected in a certain region of the northeastern United States on a particular day was 4.82. What is the hydrogen ion concentration of rainwater? Well, we know that, based on our previous slide, that pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, and hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the negative pH. So if I take 10 to the negative 4.82, so now I'm using that 10 to the x button on my calculator. I punch that. I put negative 4.82 equals. My calculator will spit out 1.51 times 10 to the negative fifth. That is my hydrogen ion concentration. So I went from pH back to a hydrogen ion concentration. The hydroxide ion concentration of a blood sample is 2.5 times 10 to the negative seventh molar. What is the pH of that blood? So now we're given a hydroxide ion concentration. We want to know pH. So, let's take a look. We know that pH plus pOH is always 14. We know that pOH is the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. So, if hydroxide ion concentration is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 7th, I'm going to hit, keep grabbing my phone, negative log 
2.5 EE negative 7 equals. My calculator will then spit out 6.60. Okay? So that is the pOH. By the way, obviously, if pH is going up, pOH would go down. If pOH is going down, pH would go up. Well, they're inversely related, is what I'm saying. Um, so we have our pOH. We also know that pH is the pH plus pOH is 14. So we're just going to subtract the pOH from 14 to get our pH. Okay? So I know this is a lot of trickery, but we can work through this. So one of the things we're going to have to be able to do is given one of the four variables, hydrogen ion concentration, hydroxide ion concentration, pH, or pOH, what are the other three variables? Um, so we're just going to use those mathematical tricks. I'll show you how we're going to do this. Let's say that we have a pOH of 3.61. I want to know what the pH, the OH minus, and hydrogen ion concentrations are. So we know that the pH plus the pOH has to be 14. So 14 minus 3.61 in this case would have to give me my pH. PH plus POH is always, by the way, the P is lowercase, the H is uppercase. Um, what would get? Give us 10.39. All right. So now, how can I go from pH back to hydrogen ion concentration? Well, we know that 10 to the negative pH would give me hydrogen ion. So on my calculator, I'm going to find my 10 to the X button, and I'm going to say 10 to the what? And negative 10.39. And that gives me 4.07 times 10 to the negative 11th. I'll do 4.1. 4.1 times 10 to the negative 11th. I could do the same thing with this 3.61 to get back over here. I can raise 10 to the negative 3.61. And I get 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth. 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay? By the way, these two... This times this will give me 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. All right, let's try a different one. Suppose my hydrogen ion concentration was 3.1 times 10 to the negative, I don't know, third. How could I fill out the rest of the table? Well, I could go from H to pOH by simply doing the negative log of my hydrogen ion concentration. That gives me pH by definition. So it's pH plus. Okay, so on my calculator, I hit negative, then I hit my log button, 3.1 EE negative 3, and it spits out 2.51. So this guy, 2.51 is my pH. And then I can go back over here because I know that pH plus pOH. is going to equal 14. So it's be a plus there. Um, so 14 minus 2.51 gives me 11.49. Oh, can't believe I had to use a calculator to do that. Now, to get back here to OH from POH, I can do 10 to the negative 11.49. 4, 9 to get my OH. That is supposed to be a 10. Ah, that's nice. So 10 to the negative 11.49 equals 3.5 times 10 to the negative 12. 3.5 times 10 to the negative 12. That is a 3. That's a perfect 3. Okay, so I did, forgot to do acid base in the other one. Um, you'll notice that the hydrogen ion concentration, 10 to the negative 3rd, 
is much greater than the hydroxide concentration, 10 to the negative 12. If hydrogen is greater than hydroxide, we know it's an acid. We also know that the pH is less than 7. Less than 7, we said, is acidic. Greater than 7 is basic. So the lower this number, if it's below 7, we know we have an acid. And again, to remind you, as we go lower and lower below 7, the more acidic we become. The higher we go above 7, the more alkaline or basic we become. And at this point, where we're neutral, our hydrogens and hydroxides are equal. So thank you for your attention, and I will see you guys in a bit to talk about this. Thank you.